All right, signal construction example number two. This is very similar to the last example we worked. We're just going to consider a different signal x of t. So here is the time axis, and I'll go ahead and label my time axis and my amplitude axis, and I'll go ahead and sketch a signal x of t. So that blue curve right there is the signal x of t. And just like before, what we would like to do in this problem is we would like to be able to write x of t in terms of unit step and unit ramp functions. So our goal is to be able to write an equation, x of t equals, and then we're going to fill in this blank spot with a sequence of time-shifted unit step and unit ramp functions. So just like before, I like to start at the left and work myself to the right, and we'll add in terms to this expression that we're going to develop that account for each change in the signal value. So originally over here on the left, x of t is 0, and then at time minus 2, something happens. And what happens is a step. We see it jump up instantaneously, so that tells us a step occurred. And what's happening there is we have stepped up a value of 2, and that has occurred at the time t equals negative 2. So right away I can go ahead and just write down 2u of t plus 2. That is a unit step function. We've put a 2 to account for the fact that we step up by 2, and it's t plus 2 to account for it's been shifted to the left 2 units of time. So this part of our expression takes care of this value from minus 2 up until minus 1. At time minus 1, something else happens, though. Another step occurs. We step down a value of 1. So at time minus 1, we need to step down. So we need to add in a negative unit step at time t plus 1. This value is held all the way up until t equals 1. And the next thing that happens is we start ramping downward. So at time 1, I know I'm going to have some type of ramp signal. The ramp, in this case, has a slope of minus 1. You can see that pretty easily. It goes down 1 and over 1. So it has a slope of negative 1. So I need to subtract off 1 times a ramp function at t minus 1, because that's when the decrease starts occurring. And then right here at time 2, that's the next time something changes. I'm decreasing with a slope of negative 1 between 1 and 2. At time 2, my slope changes. It was negative 1, and now it has flattened out to a slope of 0. There is no slope here. It's just constant. So to go from a slope of minus 1 to a slope of 0, I need to add in a slope of 1. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So at time 2, I need to add in a slope of 1. Well, I can do that with a ramp function. So I just need to add in a ramp of time t minus 2 because it occurs at time t equals 2. And then that value is just held for forever, so that should be the last term in my expression. So this is what I am claiming is an equation for the signal we were provided in the problem. Just like last time, um, I like to check a few points just to make sure I didn't do anything horribly wrong. So it's nice to pick a time or two plug into your expression and make sure the value you get from your expression matches the value that you see in the plot. So let's check x of 1. So if we replace all the t's with 1's, we get 2u of 3 minus u of 2 minus r of 0 plus r of minus 1. The ramp function is 0 for t less than or equal to 0, so we know these last terms are both 0. That just leaves us with the first couple terms which are 2 times 1, the unit step at times 3 is on, so it has a value of 1, and then minus 1, because u at time 2 is equal to 1. If you do this, that gives you 1, and indeed, at time 1, on our plot, we do have a value of 1. So I plugged into my equation, the value I got at this particular time matches what I see in my figure. Just for completeness, let's go ahead and check another point. Let's let t equals 3. So we'll have 2u of 5 minus u4 minus r of 2 plus r of 1. So this will be 2 times 1 minus 1 minus 2 plus 1. If you add all that up, you do indeed get 0, which is what we should see out here for our signal at time 3 from the figure. So that wraps up this problem.